We are live at the Hard Rock, connected right to Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York. Staying dry inside, getting ready for the biggest Yankee game in the Bronx in a very, very long time. Plus, of course, you got the Jets doing the unthinkable, going to Green Bay, taking care of business there. And the New York Giants doing the same thing against the Baltimore Ravens. Today's going to be a special day. I'm all pumped up. If you have a pulse, you have to be jacked for tonight's baseball game. And, of course, we get into it on the heels of a big win yesterday. And, of course, the football. And this is what it's all about. Good afternoon, Evan. How are you today, kid? All hail. Garrett Cole. He's the ace. He pitched like an ace. He acted like an ace. He's an ace. He's an for ace. Now. Oh, for now. <laughs> for now. Listen, if he loses game three in the ALDS, we'll talk about Look, it. Look, obviously the Astros beat him up in the ALCS. Maybe your views will be different, but they needed Garrett Cole last night yeah. to be the freaking man. He got and the he job was, done. Listen. And he was rocky in the first three innings of this game. Really, you know what changed everything? Josh Naylor being an ass. As soon as Josh Naylor did his little home run baby dance, yeah. Garrett Cole kind of flipped the switch and said, all right, time to dominate. And he did. He got through that little problem in the seventh inning. He hands the baseball right to two reliable relievers in Wandy and Clay. And Garrett Cole keeps the New York Yankees alive. So right now is a better time than any. Apologize. Now, see, that's the weird thing about this. I've gotten, a lot, I've gotten a lot of that on Twitter. <laughs> hey, are you, will, are you, you need to apologize. He's an ace. How could you say he's not an ace? Listen, in the moment when I said it, I meant it, and I was right. Now, however, thank God we have Garrett Cole because <laughs> yeah. this series would have been over, of course. Uh, we might want to also consider, I'm just saying, just putting it out there, just a rare observation for me that I know I'm right about. Can we move the outfielders in a little bit? <laughs> Especially can, in left field. Can we have somebody play 10 feet closer to the infield so the Indians, excuse me, the Guardians, don't dink and dunk every single uh, at-bat they have? But look, last night was money good. Garrett did his job. And now it comes down to Jamison Tyone et al. Because all hands on deck, overused cliche, but that's the reality. Figure out a way to get through well, tonight. Worry about game one tomorrow. Here's the truth. Now, the Yankees could go out and score 15 runs and make this easy. But if this is a close game, and so far this series has been littered with close games, tomorrow on this radio station at every office in New York City, the topic of conversation is going to be Aaron Boone. Because he, every decision he makes tonight, you know, you saw what happened Saturday when yeah. he did have a bad day and had an even worse day after the game was over trying to explain his bullpen usage. But when you go into a game in which you're not handing the ball to an ace, this isn't a decade ago when they played a game five of the divisional series and they handed it to CC Sabathia, and that was it. Right. CC went nine, Yankees beat the Orioles, see you later. Like, you are probably having a bullpen game. Unless Jamison Tyone dominates, then maybe Listen, you're right. To be fair, him. I mean, it, it was, what, one inning the other night? Uh, it wasn't like they were hitting him hard. No, and he only faced three right, batters. Right, I mean, it was like a little dink and dunk, a little lollipop crap. You know what? The way I look but, at it, Craig, it's not a bullpen. He's going to start the game. Right. You're just going to have a really quick hook on him because it's a winner-take-all game five. Yes, he is the pitcher until he's in trouble, frankly. Yes. And as soon as he's in trouble, someone's but, coming in. But, Craig, this is a bullpen with no exact roles, which means everything Aaron Boone does, right yes. or wrong, is going to be under the microscope. Yeah. And I thought early in this series he pushed all the right buttons. Saturday was odd. Because he knew Clay Holmes wasn't available. Clay Holmes didn't know he was available. And he managed his bullpen as if Clay Holmes was available. Yeah, it was strange. And again, I, you know, little flares, little you know, drop in nothing. But it does baseball. And it happened. And here we are. I love elimination games. To me, this is the beauty of sports. Every Yankee fan out there today has agita. Yes. Yeah, you're miserable. You got the butterflies. It overtakes your life. Thank God the Jets and Giants did their job yesterday <laughs> to make this moment a little bit easier because you can distract yourself a little bit, not a lot. And as the day moves on, less and less and less from the because of the fact that the New York Jets went into Lambeau Field. Oh, they can't win in Lambeau, mm. especially after Green Bay just lost to the Giants a week ago in London, except that they did. All right. Oh, the Giants can't handle the running attack of the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson, except that they did. Down 10 in the fourth quarter, another come from behind win. And the Jets, first half, not great. 3-3, though, and a dominating defensive performance oh my God. across the board. And although we know about them, it was a coming out party for Quentin Williams league-wide. National audience, 
Everyone waits to see what's going to happen, and that dude dominates. How often in the NFL, besides the quarterback, can you see one guy dominate a game the way Quinn and Williams dominated that football game? It was like an Aaron side? Donald kind of performance. It really was. Yeah. I mean, he's blocking field goals. He's <laughs> blocking punts. He's sacking quarterbacks. He's putting constant pressure on Aaron Rodgers. Quinn and Williams had a great year so far, so this isn't new, by like the way, you said. A month ago... The defensive coordinator said, when I turn to look in the sideline, yeah, I winded. see a guy out of breath. <laughs> Maybe you want to walk those statements back Dude, a bit. their defensive line is playing out of their mind. Sauce Gardner looks like one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. And really from about three or four minutes into the third quarter on, the Jets dominated. I can't figure out what's more impressive. The Jets doing that at Lambeau or the fact that New York Giants basically tell opponents, you know what, if you keep us within striking distance and there's about nine minutes to go in the game, we're going to beat you. Yes. We're going to find a way to force a big turnover, which is exactly what well, they did. Well, to be fair, that was Lamar Jackson's stupidity, but Love made the catch. Hey, you know what? To you still got to make the play, because yeah. if you remember one drive earlier, Lamar Jackson threw a touchdown pass to Mark Andrews. It was a touchdown pass, and it went off of his body and deflected up in the air, Yes, and the Giants came this close to forcing should've, a turnover should've. right then and there. Yeah. They haven't had a lot of interceptions this year, right? but the New York Giants are sending a message to the league. Don't let it stay close. Because yeah. if you let this game stay close, we don't care who you are. We don't care if you're the Packers in London yeah. or the Ravens at MetLife Stadium. We're going to find a way to beat you. And what's crazy about those two games in particular is they're a possession away from being blown out. Yeah. You know, they're down double digits to Green Bay in the first half. They're down 10 in the fourth quarter yesterday. They're down to everybody they play, but you're right. If it's close... They're going to make the plays, and you're not. And now all of a sudden, the New York Giants sit there at 5-1. and one. Dude, 5-1. And, and you say, like, listen, it's the NFL. It's not all smoke and mirrors. You're 5-1. and one. Danny Jones has now gone three straight games. No turnovers at all. So he's managing the offense. Saquon, again, touched by the hand of God, Saquon. That's the Saquon we're getting right now. And the New York Giants are fun to watch. Hey, listen, after they score the touchdown and Bellinger gets in the end zone, the Ravens have the football. And by the way, Bellinger, last week it was uh, Slayton. Uh, the week before that, it was Sills. Yep. You have this no-name wide receiver. I know. Galladay never plays. <laughs> Kadarius Tony never plays. And each week, it's a guy, let's be yes. honest, you never heard of. And you know who I thought was the biggest hero yesterday offensively besides uh, the obvious? Wondell Robinson. How many yeah. times did he make a big play Had on the third touchdown? Down? It's great. Listen, but, the, but their defense. Awesome. But think about this, bro. So after the Giants go ahead, Ravens have the football. They got a chance to win. It's twenty four twenty. Like I'm thinking to myself, all right, here's where Lamar marches down the field, and the Ravens find a way to win. And there's that man, Kayvon Thibodeau. His first sack is a Giant. Just in case you thought it was all Dave Gettleman guys, and it mostly has been. Here comes Kayvon Thibodeau. Batting the ball away from Lamar. Leonard Williams jumps on it. And the New York Giants make the plays when they have to. And you know what? It doesn't matter what the talent says. It doesn't matter the expectations. This is a 17-game season in a mediocre league. And they're 5-1. and one. Yeah, and I'll do you one better. You, uh, just proof on one play to show you how well they're coached. And in comparison, how other teams are not coached that well. And it's one play. I know. It's a nondescript play yep. that should have been a touchdown. Saquon Barkley with the great spin move at the line comes around the right side. They're up four. And he sits down on about the one and a half, two yard line. He gets the first down and he guarantees the W because one time out left, yep. you rock out your uh, take the knee. And they never get the ball back. And that's exactly what Chubb didn't do against the Jets. He scored the touchdown. And you're thinking, there's no possible way. Right. But there was. And that, to me, means he was coached Of course. Right. Dude, right now, this is one of the best coach teams in the NFL. Period. They're, the, they're one of the best coach teams in the NFL because these other successful teams are just littered with talent. This team is not littered with talent. Now, maybe they have more talent than we realize. Sure. Maybe we have to start giving them credit, especially defensively, but they are so well coached. And I'll give you another example from yesterday that reaffirms it. And I have great respect for John Harbaugh. We all do. How about the mindless penalties the Baltimore Ravens yeah. took? And how about the lack of penalties the New York Giants took? Dude, They're not a just disciplined that. team, man. The Ravens are the worst fourth-quarter team in the NFL. No yep. joke. And the Giants they rank are dead elite. last in everything. And they have the Giants, who I don't know where they rank, but obviously have to be towards the top of the league in fourth-quarter production. And now they're a game behind the Eagles. And as much as it, it pains me to say it, before you Eagle fans get all crazy, congrats, you're 6-0. and 
you beat a practice squad quarterback yesterday. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. Uh, and you didn't complete 20 passes yourself in yesterday's game. But it don't matter. You're 6 and 0. Oh. I know everyone's waiting for Christmas Eve now for that rematch, but I want Eagles Giants. Yeah. Forget about the Eagles Dude, Cowboys the Giants, rematch. I want to see the Eagles against the Giants. The Giants have beaten good teams. If you look at their schedule coming up, they're facing a lot of, I don't want to say mediocre teams, because Jacksonville's, I think, okay. Jacksonville sucks. They don't suck, but they're not great. They're, they're somewhere sieve. in the middle. And for all this talk about all oh, the Jaguar defense is all good, they gave up 90 points yesterday. I understand, but their quarterback is pretty good. I think yeah. they took three incompletions yesterday. They didn't turn the ball over that much. Yeah. Look, the Giants right now are proving they can play with anybody. That's and what the Jets proving. are too. The Jets are proving it too. Both teams in New York, and this is stunning to say. I still can't believe this is actually a thing. But we are watching two football teams that can look around the league and say, outside of Kansas City and Buffalo, and I guess Philadelphia, we're as good as anybody. Yeah. I mean, they're not. But, yeah, they can no, say it. But right it. now they are. They can say Dude, it Dude, who's sure. it? Take Kansas City, Buffalo, Philly. Let's put them aside. Yeah. Okay? Look around the NFL right now. The Ravens but that good? Doesn't exist. Are the Buccaneers that good? They're clearly not Are that Jimmy good. Garoppolo's Niners that good? Not after yesterday. Are the defending NFC champion Rams that good? No, they're not. Give me a break. It's a mediocre world, and the Jets and Giants are relevant. There. I think Minnesota's that good offensively. I worry about them defensively, but they're 5-1. and one, Sure. So I'm sure in Minnesota they're saying the same thing. Lead the division Giant by fans today. are saying, yeah. yeah. So listen, it's all good. We got all the football for you. And tonight's one of those moments. Like, why are we at Hard Rock today? We don't need to be here. We want to be here. Because in about a, two hours or so, three hours, whatever it is, when the doors officially open up to ticketed Yankee fans only, this place is going to be a scene. And we've not had moments like that in the last couple of years. We really haven't. An elimination game at Yankee Stadium. This would be like, and I know it's a dream, a game seven at the Garden. <laughs> With the Rangers, sure, but not the Knicks. He's like, I am, I'm stoked for this. Uh, I'm going to have a couple uh, sugar-free Red Bulls, a couple C4s, a couple five-hour energies, whatever else they got there, and I'm going to make sure I stay I, awake. I also – come on now. I also have good news for you. I'm Yankee also fans. not going to the game. So well, I'll put it out there now. I, Let's get that out of the way. I am going to the game, and for any Yankee <laughs> fan who says, get that Met fan-loving bastard out of my building, yeah. I did some calculations this morning. This will be my 19th New York Yankees postseason game. Nice. And quite frankly, when I go, your baseball team always wins. They're 13-5. and five. So if they win, you're welcome. He's going with Big Mac uh, and Tommy, I believe. I did get offered those special seats, you know, with the, all the candy and shrimp and lobster and all that stuff. Uh, I would have had to have kicked Jim Leyritz out of his seat, <laughs> but that was done. Uh, and I said no, because I'm a good guy. And uh, I really just want to go home. Wait, so you know where Big Mac and I are sitting tonight? You guys are probably sitting upper deck. Upper deck, love. baby. Yeah. Upper deck. By the way, you guys should go. Big Mac's a real fan. I'm not. You're, uh, you know, a hater, but a real one. <laughs> so you should get to go because when the Yankees win tonight, I want Big Mac to videotape you, and I want to see you recognizing that you've got no ammunition. Well, because I, you and I both know. <laughs> If the Yankees lose tonight, you've got ammo that every Met fan's holding on to, hoping for a debacle tonight at Yankee Stadium. I know what all of you are thinking. Please lose. Please lose. Please lose. Because <laughs> yeah. if the Yankees win, you guys are neutered until the offseason well, acquisitions let, begin. Let's also be perfectly honest about what this means. You have to win tonight. There is losing is not an option. You can't I lose to this quadruple-A lineup known as the Cleveland Guardians, you can, especially if he's, you he's gave away Mac? game three. The game is over. You're ahead of Oscar Gonzalez one and two, and then just out of nowhere, he pokes that crap up the middle. You can't lose this game. You know they can't lose this game. Big Mac knows they can't lose this game. Spike, who's sort of a Yankee fan, knows they can't lose this game. Yankee fans know they can't lose this game. No. You cannot lose this game. Look, you lose to the Astros as much as it'll piss you off. They're, you respect them. You may hate them, but you sure. respect them. This is a baseball team you cannot lose to. And here's the scary part. I, by the way, I agree with you 100%. But, but Craig, here's the scary part. Yeah. The San Diego Padres got neutered by the Dodgers all season long, yep. and they won 22 less games. And guess what happened in a best of five? San Diego won. It didn't even take five. So tonight at Yankee Stadium, here's the, the, the fairest analysis I'll give you. 
No one has any freaking idea what's going to happen. You could take a damn coin. You could flip it in the air. Maybe Tyone dominates. Maybe gets knocked out in the first inning. Yep. Maybe Aaron Savali pitches the game of his life. Maybe, uh, you know, you name the random guardian. Why Austin Hedges the- goes five for five. That's why they play the games. That's why it's beautiful. And this is why sports is amazing. Right yeah. here, right now, if you don't understand why tonight is special and why you should put everything in your life aside to watch or listen to tonight's game, then you just will never, ever, ever get it. And I'm pumped to be a part of it. Plus, the company's buying lunch, so I feel pretty good <laughs> about that. And I was told, whatever I want, for whomever I want, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. <laughs> yes, because that's how we roll at Odyssey, WFAN. It's lunch and drinks for everybody. <laughs> and right now, right now, it's closed. So everybody just means our staff. That's <laughs> just all. Us. And even that's being itemized right now. 